are we too young to go on a princess cruise? Hello, we're Chris and Lydia. We've just returned from a seven night cruise to Tasmania on the Majestic Princess Cruise. And just like any cruise line, there were things that we liked and things that we didn't like about the cruise. So we thought we'd do a review and offer you some insight to see what we felt about the cruise and to see if you think it's right for you. The first thing that we liked about the Majestic Princess cruise ship uh, was the ship itself. It's a large ship. It's one of the largest ships in the Princess fleet. It can hold up to 3,600 passengers and it's quite new as well. It was launched in 2017. You enter via the main piazza area and it's three levels of all sort of gold and very opulent sort of decorations. And they often have nighttime entertainment there and singing, there's a bar downstairs and they have dance classes. And that's where I guess the main hub of activity is on through the course of the day and the evening. Yeah, and there's also fitness classes, even a champagne fountain that they have down there. And there's bars and restaurants on the upper levels as well, all looking down upon that marble dance floor area below. The main pool area was up on deck 16. There wasn't a lot of people in the actual pool itself, but certainly the hot tubs were very well patronated. Not like a cruise that has a lot of children on it where it wouldn't matter what the weather was, the <laughs> children would be in the pool at any time. But there was an indoor pool in the conservatory area and we found this conservatory area on deck 16, uh, but towards the front of the ship, lots of lovely lounge chairs and big, big wide open windows so that you could see where you were sailing. It's a lovely area. We sat there and read our books. Maybe we had a snooze. Yeah. <laughs> or a <laughs> but, cocktail. <laughs> But there wasn't a whole lot of lounge chairs though, so you might want to get there early to reserve one of your lounge chairs so that you don't miss out. It's a nice place to hang out. Even with the balcony room, we did sort of spend a good half a day or more out the back. So we also really enjoyed our state room, which was a balcony room. It was only the second time that we've had a balcony room in a cruise ship before, and it was a lovely room. Mm, beautiful room. Very comfortable beds. Yeah. comfortable pillows we loved the balcony it had a sliding door and you could leave the door open so you could get the fresh beautiful tasmanian air blowing through mm -hmm. and you could walk in and out to the quite a wide balcony so you could sit out there and watch the world go by unlike other cruises we've been on which had a self-closing door really heavy door mm. that you couldn't just hold it open and go in and out of so we really preferred this room so leave the door open and have that fresh mm. air have and a was... cup of tea outside in the morning it was just beautiful yeah beautiful room it was really and nice lots room. of storage too there was <laughs> big area for hanging clothes and storing your bags uh, so we didn't feel crowded in our room at all especially with only the two of us. Yes. <laughs> we used to having four all squished in. Yeah. So, uh, you know, but it was also a good size, very good size room with it everything was. you needed. The second thing that we liked about our Majestic Princess Cruise uh, was the itinerary itself. Uh, Princess Cruise is a big cruise line, so they've got lots of ships all over the world with lots of great itineraries. And this one wasn't any exception. Yeah, that's the one thing I really like about the Princess Cruises when I was doing some research is they do seem to stop at a lot more ports than some of the other cruises. I find that a lot of the other cruises might be a little bit more about the ship than about the destination, whereas yeah. this, for seven nights, we have stopped in Port Arthur, we stopped in Hobart, we stopped in Eden. So three ports in seven days is quite generous and and actually it was two nights in Hobart as well. So it was a really good itinerary and a good amount of time to see those places. And don't forget, we went scenic cruising as well. around the Freysenet Peninsula, which was nice to see that rugged coastline that Tasmania is mm. known for. In Hobart, we could actually dock in Hobart. The dock was big enough for the ship. It is a big ship, so it may struggle to get into the smaller areas, but it, we could still get into Port Arthur and we, they tended us in. So. We were lucky actually. Yeah, um, very lucky with the weather. We've heard that some people on other cruises have not been able to tender across to Port Arthur because of the weather. It anchored just off the shore from Port Arthur. Other cruise ships we've read about have anchored further away from Port Arthur and bust the passengers to the settlement. But so it was really nice being able to just tender across and we're right there in the heart of it. Mm. 
just couldn't believe how clear the water was. It was just amazing very inviting even though i'm sure it would have been really cold but uh, i definitely want to go back and really explore from land tasmania in more detail yeah the third thing that we really liked about our princess cruise ship was that you don't have a room key card Instead, they give you a little medallion that you wear around your neck or your wrist, just like a key card, so you can charge purchases onto your onboard account with it, or you can use it to embark and disembark the ship at ports of call. It also unlocks your stateroom. You just approach the door and the door unlocks automatically. The thing that's different about it though is it has a little tracking device in there so anywhere on the ship it can find you and also you can order from the app on your phone um, whatever drinks you may want or a coffee or whatever and they'll find you. So you can also find your other party member if you go and do your own thing for the day and you want to catch up somewhere you can actually track them and see where they are and meet them. So, so that's really good because we've been mm. on cruises in a group and it's been very difficult on a large mm. ship to catch up with people, especially if they're staying in separate staterooms. So this way you can look up on the app and find the other people in your group and then it's easy to meet up at a bar or something like that. Show so or whatever. Or show, yeah. yeah, it's really, 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 really it's a game changer. Mm. So one of the biggest features that sets Princess Cruise aside from all other cruise ships. Although I guess if you are traveling with family and kids, Maybe you want to escape the kids. So. But I have heard you can actually turn it off. Can you? Yeah, yeah. In the okay. app, you All can right. sort of say, don't want them to find me. So <laughs> they can just keep wandering. <laughs> we didn't have to do that. No. <laughs> or did we? <laughs> That's why I couldn't find you. Yeah. I was having a mouth. I thought it was me. Yeah. <laughs> The fourth thing that we really liked about the cruise was... At the package that we were on. Yes. <laughs> we booked nine months out and so we got a really good special brew flight centre. It allowed us an upgrade of our room. So we paid for an ocean view room and we received a balcony room. And with that, we also received the Princess Plus package, which included a beverage package as well as room service, Wi-Fi and a few other little bits and pieces. Uh, we'd never purchased an alcohol package before uh, we're not a big drinkers we do enjoy a glass of wine or a beer but we're not huge drinkers i think with our drinks package we got drinks up to 22 dollars in value plus package covered most drinks there wasn't oh, yeah. a lot that it didn't cover and if you did want to have a more exclusive drink you are able on the plus package to just pay the difference. Yes. So that's an option as well if that's what you want to go for. But it certainly covers all your cocktails. and Cocktails range in price from about $15 up to 25 and more. Um, but most of them were under the $22 limit that we were allowed to get on our package. We were able to test and try all these different cocktails that I've heard about in movies and in Hollywood and never tried. Uh, and if I didn't like it, I just put it aside and ordered another one because there was no way I was going to get near the 15 alcoholic drinks per day limit. Mm. And it wasn't cheap liquor either <laughs> no. or, it, or cheap spirits. And they didn't water it down. They either. didn't water it down because we like a nice margarita and they didn't use cheap tequila. They were actually using the Patron tequila. So that was a surprise because I thought being a package, it would be lesser quality alcohol. Yeah, And yeah. it wasn't. And they had a ton of different cocktails. They had a huge library. You can order it on your app, on your phone. Not only the traditional cocktails, but all these specialty cocktails that they'd made up themselves. And I think a lot of people go on a Princess Cruise and they all have their specialty cocktails that they're looking forward to. So if you've been on a Princess Cruise yourself, uh, let us know in the comments below what cocktail you like and, and what's what in it. And what we should try because we yeah. might not have, we, you know, we'd like, we're open to trying new ones. So yeah. if you've got one that you say this, you have to try this, then let us know because we'd love to hear about it. Yeah, please. Another big thing in the Princess Plus package was the delivery service. Mm. So it wasn't just room service because of your medallion being able to track your position in the ship, our service waiters were able to find us anywhere in the ship. So we could be sitting in a show 
and they would bring us a drink or we could be sitting by the pool and the, or in the conservatory. And the room service was uh, something new for us too. Yes. Like So the days at port, instead of going up and having breakfast, we'd just order room service and, and our specialty coffee and they'd bring it to our yeah. room and we can eat at your own pace, especially if you've got a balcony, you can sit out there, have a cup of coffee and a piece of toast and then you're on your, you know, you get ready and you're on your way. So you can order it the night before yeah. and tell them the time that you wanted. But every morning we woke up, first thing I did when I wake up, was get on the app and order our espresso coffees, mm. specialty coffees. And half an hour later, after you've had your shower, knock on the door and there's your coffees. Other things on the package, you've got free Wi-Fi, mm. which probably we wouldn't have missed if we didn't have it. We got two fitness classes. We did yoga. I've done a lot of yoga before and I found that the instructor was an all-round gym instructor, not specifically a yoga instructor. So I wouldn't say it was a traditional yoga as such. It was more of a stretch class, I would call it. I haven't done yoga before, so it was all new to me. Yeah. So I had nothing to compare it to. So it seemed fine. I felt like I was doing yoga. Yeah, it, was, it was a good stretch class, let's just okay. say. Yeah. They do offer two specialty desserts per person today. Per day mm. and the specialty dessert was a big like ice cream sundae you can have all sorts of lollies and stuff piled in on top of ice cream i think we had it once didn't we we had think, it once it i think you had it once and then i had it once you I, could add two each per day two each on per the day. package we Goodness. were on there's just no yeah, way there no. is no <laughs> way you could eat two of these i had more hope of drinking the 15 drinks on the alcohol <laughs> yeah, package so. than i had of eating they're, they're those like, ice creams this big. you got to do it once to say you've done it but yeah. that, we only did it the one day that was that was enough for it also included two meals each at casual dining restaurants. Mm. So there was a couple of casual dining restaurants, a seafood restaurant and a pizza restaurant. Sushi, like Japanese. Yeah, and we had the sushi. It was we really did. nice. The big sushi platter that came out was massive. You could have shared that very, very easily. To have one each, we just couldn't get through it all ourselves. And these casual restaurants are restaurants that you pay a little bit extra mm. to go to. So. Uh, to not... have it included was yes. nice. And we have had better um, meals in the restaurants be on other cruises. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's the worst mm. and I wouldn't say it's the best. With our special, it worked out that we were only spending an extra $42 each per day, which may sound a lot, but when you consider the cheapest glass of wine you could get at dinner was $15. If you have two glasses of wine and a coffee a day, that covers your $42 and everything else is a bonus. Mm. And, it, and it included bottled water and we drink a lot of bottled waters. We would have two or three coffees a day and mm -hmm. so they're your espresso coffees and they add up. Um, it also included fresh juices and smoothies. That certainly adds up as well. So I still think it's quite good value. <laughs> The next point in our review could either be a pro or a con, depending on the reason that you've come on the ship, cruise ship in the first place. When we booked our Princess Cruise, we heard that it was an older demographic, but I didn't really understand how old until we actually got on the ship. It's a lot more catered for the older demographic as far as the entertainment goes and the activities, especially. In saying that, we were going on there for rest and relaxation, so it suited us for that type of holiday because there was less hustle and bustle and running around and noise. This was our first vacation as empty nesters so now that the kids have left home we were quite happy to do nothing but spend time relaxing and reading and chatting. The lack of families and children was actually a pro rather than a con at least during the day anyway. Uh, there's certainly a lot less to do if you're a family and you've got kids. Yes, yeah. There's no water slides, there's no wave riders or climbing walls, mm. all the other activities that you might find on other cruise lines. It's not the first cruise ship you'd think of if you were taking a family along. No, they do have a kids club yeah, yeah. and there is a swimming pool mm. and there's some sports. So there are things for kids mm. to do. Yeah. But if you were a family looking for a cruise, I would say that this is probably not for you. Yeah. The second thing that we didn't like about the ship, the entertainment choices and options at night time. Mm, yes, definitely. It might be a bit controversial. Yeah, some people do like the entertainment on the princess ship. Particularly if they like going to game shows or if they go up to the top deck and watch the dancing fountains or the movies under the stars. We like something a little bit more upbeat, however. Live music and uh, karaoke and a bit more upbeat shows. Even the shows, yeah. Yeah, yep. so I think it wasn't our preference. The shows were okay. They had two productions 
action shows mm. over the oh, seven nights bad. we were there. There was one that was a tribute to soul music and mm, singing and dancing. It was a, probably a, your traditional cruise ship entertainment show. The other show was called Encore, and it was more of an operatic show, and there was a brilliant soprano singer from Australia. It was a really good show, lots of good costumes. She was mm. singing in Italian, and it was really, really good. So if you're going on a princess cruise and you get a chance to choose a cruise with Encore, I would recommend that. Mm. The other shows were basically just guest performers and singing tributes to the Beatles or to Helen Reddy or singing country music. The shows were okay, but the rest of the entertainment was mainly concentrated in the piazza. And that's... Where it fell down. That's where it fell down. Yeah. No, there was... A, I wouldn't even say it was a noise coming from... <laughs> The piazza area that I couldn't quite work out what it was only to get closer to it and it was somebody singing. But I'd think they weren't singing in their native tongue and so to be singing English songs with their accent, it just wasn't a pleasant <laughs> sound to the ear, let's just say. <laughs> You've been very di diplomatic. <laughs> I'm trying to be, it just wasn't good. But... Um, but that was one of the groups. That there was, was a few groups. There was, there was a, a really was good acoustic guitar player. Yeah. They had a piano player. They had some violinists. All the entertainment was concentrated in that hub, that mm. piazza area. So you didn't have a lot of choice. If you weren't in the mood for what was playing, you couldn't go somewhere else yeah. for a different... So we've, we've been on ships before where they've got had different entertainment in different areas. If you wanted to see a live band, there would be an area to go to to see the band. If you wanted to sing along with a, a pianist at a piano bar, there was an area for that. Or if you wanted to dance the night away, you could go to the disco. Mm. If you wanted to sing yeah. karaoke, you could yeah, sing you karaoke. Could. But yeah. on the Princess Cruise, everything was concentrated in the piazza. And it was the same thing night after night. We didn't have that choice, that, that variety. <laughs> So here's the big question for you. Are we too young to go on a princess cruise? Hmm. It really depends on what type of experience we're looking for. Right. So if we're looking for relaxation and the itinerary, 100% we're in the right demographic. If we're looking to go for fun and entertainment and nighttime activities with our young adult children or friends, then we're too young for this cruise. <laughs> well, I'm in the too young category. I certainly am. Yeah. <laughs> we did feel like relaxation, but I still, at night time, I want to let my hair down. I want to go see a live band, but I also want to, you know, go and to a disco and do some dancing. Overall, I think we're too yeah, young for it. We are. But at the same time, we enjoyed the cruise immensely because it gave us what we were looking for at that time. It was. But we'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Mm. So if you've been on a princess cruise and no matter what age you are, tell us what you liked about it, what you didn't like, and if you'd go on it again because um, we may have missed something. Or let us know your favourite cruise line as well. Yeah. we'd love to hear that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Yeah. Um, I hope this has been useful for you. If Enough you're... of our roving rambles. Yeah. <laughs> if you're planning on going on a princess cruise, hopefully we have shed some light. Mm.